Hello, what's up? Welcome. Welcome to the stream. Today's like the 500 and 600 and 700. 560? 570? I don't know. There's been a lot of episodes making this video game so far. Almost as the third year. But uh, what I'm working on today is the menu. So, oh man, for years actually, <laughs> last year and a half or so, it's been a lot of things. I've looked at this menu and gone, well, this could be better. Um, let's get the, this hooked up. One thing that just got better today was the hold to equip. So watching new players play, like at the at PAX and GDC and you know these other events and stuff like that, it became pretty clear, clear that uh, it, if you accidentally just barely tapped a button, it wasn't very clear before that you had to hold to remap. So now I've made it so it um, it has that hold to remap for a lot longer, and it shows the bar percentage that you that you held for. So if you do go ahead and hold the whole time, it's also got a nice little flashing thing like you're still holding it, and then you let go, and it remaps. Um, but now the next thing that's even better is it. Another thing that wasn't clear was um, these equipped items. So they're a little clearer now in the sense that they reorganize themselves based on um, the order of your buttons. So for example, if you've got your X button, if I, let's say I remap my flask to C, which is basically the L button on a, on a controller, it'll go and reorder those so that the L button is, is in order with that. And same thing with like, if I, let's say I want to remap my first button, the A button, to from the sword to something else. Let's map it to the teleporter. Um, let's remap that, and it'll put the teleporter first because it's the first button. So it should be a little more intuitive, both those things, to help this whole equipment system be a little more intuitive. So that's good. That's all done. That's finished. That's dusted. It's put underneath the bed. It's all, it's all ready to go. The next thing is to make it so you can switch over to the right side over there, the map, and teleport. So you'll be able to teleport straight from the map. You'll be able to select the little purple squares over there, select one of them, and then um, you know confirm that you want to teleport there. And then it just, you don't even have to equip the teleporter. It just teleports you. What's up, Kukuriku? So that's my goal, is to make that, make it so you can select items from, or select map locations and warp to them straight from the menu. I'm not sure how long this will take. This might take, this might be possible to accomplish in, a str in one stream. It might take the rest of the night. So we'll see. Um, the first thing I need to do is create choices for each one of those um, areas on the map. They'll need to all be individual menu choices so that the, the cursor can move over and select them. So, um, I do believe there's a thing where it draws the map. Maybe not. Where does it draw? Oh man, it might actually be in phase gear where it draws the map, a whole different thing. Oh yeah, it is, it's right here. Oh, that explains why it's not flashing all weird or whatever when it, um, when I reload the, the gear, okay. Well, so that means that we need to somehow get into this map layer Oh, well, we've got the map. What up, Salad? <coughs> oh, excuse me. How's it going? So I guess I could look through the whole map layer. Look for any of the sprites. Yeah, pretty good too. Things are going really well. Um, Songbringer is getting a little bit more done these days. 
in the next few months, it's really just going to be like final refinements. It's like almost done. It's a really crazy feeling when you've been working on something this long. And then it's like all of a sudden, like the end of the end of it is coming in sight. It's really um, satisfying and um, sort of triumphant feeling, you know, to stick with something for like three years, make a game for a long time takes persistence and determination and stuff. So I'm, I guess I'm, you know, trying to be proud of myself. Yeah, it is. It's scary as, it's scary as shit for sure. Yeah, it's scary because, you know, I'm like worried like, oh gosh, is it, you know, are there bugs I've, I don't even know about? Are there like, you know, is am I going to be able to finish all the little things in time and stuff all that? <laughs> so if I can get into this map layer. Oh, wait, this is depends. So the draw map function, I think it creates sprites for each one. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Hukurigu. Yeah, right? Actually, maybe the map sprites I could add a special tag. Oh, that's a good idea. I could look for a special tag that means this is one of the... Um, Uh, I hope so. I hope so. That'd be really cool. I can see. Um, I can see starting a little bit more of more than just a one man, you know, game development studio. I would definitely love to hire some people to help me market. <clears throat> Tommy Killer, what's up, man? So the main rooms Yeah, here they are. Okay, so it's creating all these main rooms right here. Might as well give these a special tag. Well, I like doing it. I actually like doing marketing, but um, it's just so time consuming. It's like I guess I could I guess I could do this better next time if I did it all. If I did the whole game first, the whole game was done, and then I could just focus on marketing. That would that would help. It's hard to do. It's hard to do really good marketing and and do a really good game. Nice, man. Revision for exams and assignments. Oh, yeah, you've been busy. You have been busy, man. Cool. I like hearing about how y'all are busy. Makes me, um, I don't know, makes me proud of y'all. Y'all busy getting your degrees and, and stuff. Oh, I didn't mean it that way. I didn't mean like um, not doing any marketing at all. I am a firm believer in doing marketing from day one of your project. And if you're not, I really think it's a huge mistake. Yeah, in some ways, yeah, in some ways your product, if it's good, will market itself. But now that I've done Songbringer and I've been to some of these expos and stuff like that, um, I really see how much good marketing can really help the awareness of your product. You know what I mean? Like it, you got to You really kind of if you if you have a game and you really want it to reach a lot of people, you kind of have to be at these expos, man. You kind of have to do like a few of them at least per year. Like I would I would think that you would have to do at least like four expos per year to really properly market your game. Even if it is a good game or if it sucks, it doesn't really matter. You really got to get it in front of those people because what happens when you're at those expos is 
you're not only getting it in front of players and people are actually able to play your game and stuff like that, um, but you're getting it in front of the press. And that's 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 a big thing because the, all of the press is there at these expos, right? They're just walking around with their camera crews, you know, going and checking out different games. They have appointments, they have schedules, they're all going around and playing all the hottest games and stuff like that. And if your game's not there, then those people don't know. Those those that the press does not know that you that your game is ready or playable or how it is or whatever. For you to get inside the minds of like um, I don't know, the t popular culture, I guess, is really what it is. If you want to get your into the mainstream mind culture of gamers, you really kind of got to be at Expos. Right, but I want to believe that if, if your game is really good, it will be a million times easier to market. Yes, oh, totally. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of truth there, right? That your, your a good product kind of markets itself and that there really is like a... A huge synergy to it you know it's like a lot easier to market when it's a good product because you know people players number one are way more excited to play it the press is going to be way more excited to play it because they are players you know what i mean so yeah for sure for sure it's been a real big learning experience doing Songbringer. that's for sure Okay, so now I've got these set with sprites, tags, so I know I can find all of the sprites that are in the map. Hmm. I think I've got a set map, but I don't think I have a get map. So I'll need to be able to get the map from the map layer. What is it? It's not the map layer, it's something else. Map parent. Okay, so we'll make a function Oops. That function called get map parent. So we can get whatever map is the current, or node is the current. This game it just came out. You had to click it, bam. Uh-huh. Oh right, you look it looks so good, right? Yeah, totally. Okay, so we'll make this get map function. Absolutely. It's been, uh, um, yeah, what's great about streamers is like all you really got to do is just give them a free key to your game and a lot of them will approach you. The tricky part about it is like filtering out the list of people like some people are just like not actually really streamers or just starting out and they want to free copy your game or maybe they're actually not even a streamer at all and they're lying 
and they're just trying to get a free key for your game. The, the key is like filtering that out and figuring out which is which. But what really helps with that is Key Mailer. There's a website which can like, you know, vet people. Oh, inside, yeah. Yeah, I saw that at the the GDC Game Awards. They won it like it got so many nom nominations. Right? That's how you got here. Oh, really? Uh so did did little nightmares come out after? Okay, so now we have to go and when it's creating all the items. Um, it creates all the items, it's pushed back, pushes back a bunch of gear choices. Right, yeah. Oh, oh it came out yesterday. Okay, so now this is where it creates all of the buttons for the items. Here's where we'll, where we'll create um, create map choices. So this will create a choice for each one of the map positions. Yeah, Inside won so many awards. Like they won awards for, or got nominated for awards for every kind of category. Especially visually, though. Everybody's like, whoa, this is the most visually cool game. Yeah, yeah, I'm aware. I'm aware they, they are the ones, the same, same ones that made Limbo. It seems, I haven't played either Limbo or Inside, but it seems like Limbo is kind of like the spiritual successor to, or I mean, yeah, Inside's the spiritual successor to Limbo. Okay, so for each one, we need to look for all of the ta the nodes with tags. So I guess we'll loop through, get the map parent first. Game scene, get map parent. If we have a good map parent, then we're going to loop over all of the children. Recursively write a function that takes a node. Okay, now we have a list. Gone through all the all of these. So we wanna well we wanna do kit for all children and self.
if node.get tag equals that tag we gave for the this the rooms, the specific room sprites for the, on the map. Okay, so once we got that, then all we need to do is create a choice right here. So let's push back a new choice into all of the choices for this interface. You released a game? Nice! For Ludum Dare? Yeah! You're putting it up for sale? Cool! Nice! Right on! That's the that's a good strategy. I think that's a good thing to do. Just put GIFs everywhere. That's what I try and do. That's what lots of other game developers do for their, their in-house marketing. Indie marketing. Tell us about your game, man! Oh, I get. I guess right. Yeah, I guess I'm putting mine for sale. Tell us about the game, man. What's it called? Do you have links to it? Um, I just the other day, uh, Salad shared his game. Salad did one for Ludum Dare as well. What the shit? There we go. F. Interface. Get. Yeah, keep working on it. It could be. Oh, wow, this is the weirdest thing. It just keeps on erroring me out if I get even get anywhere near this line of code. There. Jeez. All right, so we've got this. We've recognized a room. C.id equals i.first. That's not what was i in this case up first was the oh the ID is the item type okay nice cool man I guess the ID will be, let's make all these IDs zero just for now. Want me to play it? I love your graphics, man. And the audio. Pono is a space god. I love this art. <laughs> Over other uh, space gods over for dinner. I like it. You got a space message. Space vegan. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> space 
Hey, Speedas! Yes, all I'm trying to do is find space pitas. D key doesn't work for me, but left and but right key, the right key does, but D doesn't for some reason. Oh, space! Oh, <laughs> yeah! <laughs> I was gonna see what happened when I died. Oh, this is great. I love it. Oh, did I find a pita? How do I adjust the volume for it? I hope I'm not blowing out your guys' audio. Ah! <laughs> I like the way the gravity worked there. Oh yeah? Was that what was the theme again? Hmm. <laughs> I love it. I love the audio. Ah! Uh! <laughs> you know what? I kinda like this um this black ring you put around, um each one of the planets. I don't know if it was intentional or not, but it kind of gives this, it almost gives each one of the planets like a feeling like it has an aura, which is kind of cool. It's a very, very simple, like, visual thing, but I think it, I don't even know if it's intentional, but it looks cool. Damn. The theme... Oh, small world. Oh... Uh, that explains why. <laughs> I'll give up. It was intentional? Nice. Really? It was just the HTML5 exporter? I think it kind of turned out cool. I like it. It's an, I think it's serendipity. Hmm. It's like get position. What is get position? Oh, that's where it like. Right. It does this whole. X percent, Y percent times. Okay. I think this, this is supposed to be putting, what is this? Oh, that's it, it's the second one from interfaces. So it takes a parent size, then you give it a position and it divides by, oh, it gives you like a position and a percentage. Okay, that's kind of a complicated way to do it. But I think I remember why. Okay, so we got the parent size. This is the position. So this is going to be um, n.getPosition. 
storing it into c.boss. Okay, I guess that works. Parent size probably needs to be captured. Uh huh. All right. No one left. Okay, I don't know if this is gonna work or not. But we're, essentially, we're pushing back a bunch of different options. For the menu, the map part of the menu, let's see if this even is anywhere near functional. It's going to push them in the list after all of the items. So that means I think I have to go to the end of the item list and then press down to get to it. If it'll even let that happen. No, it doesn't even let it. Uh, because of the way it's like it's hard it's coded to make the motion between the equipment and the passive work really well um, Let's see if we can get it to go over to the right now Peter! <laughs> oh! Nice. I like it. It reminds me of, um... Ori in the Blind Forest. Whoops, sorry, I just killed my chat window. Get that reloaded. Twitch chat. Okay, so we need the tick method when it's when it allows you to move between things at the control interface. The other tick interface tick. Here we go. So it's not a gear. It's the gear menu. Here we go. If is gear, and if we can go jump up to the passive gear, we can jump down to the active equipment. We can jump to the right to go to Okay, so we need some more code it detects if we're anywhere near the right edge, and then if we're pressing right, um, it jumps over there. What if we? What if? What if at first we just press if any anything is a right key press? Jump right to map. If the old selection is less than total active plus total passive and the add is one Mm, yeah, I hear you about that. Right, yeah. Huh. So new selection equals total active plus total passive. I think that means it'll jump to the right. This select new selection.
push me to the bottom one the second I press right. Hmm. Exactly, right? Yeah. It's good learning experience. Okay, so how about this? The select function. Mm, see, that's independent. It really doesn't matter. Okay, wait a minute. Are we actually even creating these map choices? Be a good thing to check. So I'm like, why isn't it moving over to those map choices? Is it? But are they even there? Ah, oh, see, they're not even there. Okay. Well, why is that? Hmm. Mm, right, yeah. That's a pretty important thing to know. this. Let's see if we even have a map parent. Map parent. Are you there, map parent? Yes, good. We have a map parent. This is being called from Phase gear begin, interface show. Okay, this is right there. We've already created our. That was weird. Oh, right. Easier to commit to. <laughs> right, isn't it? When you drag it out and it like goes poof. Alright, map parent is not null. Let's get in there. We've got nodes. But they're probably just all. See, if I set a breakpoint there, it's never going to hit it. Okay. So none of the children of the map parent were ever given the tag fifth. And they should have gotten the tag fifth. That would be from draw map. Sprite.set tag. So we're setting up this node if map parent equals null. Oh, this is not it. This is where we this is where the map parent is not null. Where is it? Blank room. Is there a couple places with null? How does it do the the rest of the rooms here. Rooms. Oh, maybe this is it. 
Hmm. Okay. So room sprite. There. Room visited. Yeah. This is the one we want. That other one was for the mini map. We want the actual big map. There. Hopefully that helps out all this. Should have K type it, and we should get this breakpoint right here. Yeah, we got a breakpoint. Cool. All right, let's see if we can... Oh, look, I pressed the right button and it actually get, went over there. So I pressed the right button again. Okay. We could do an int count. I give every one of these um, an ID, which we might need actually. So count is zero. Oh, let's get rid of Xcode. This thing slow. Got count is zero. I'm gonna capture count into this lambda and increase it for each one of these. And say the needs a map ID constant. Constant k min map ID equals a thousand. So the indexes from one to the number of items is actual item IDs, and then everything above a thousand is going to be map IDs for, for this whole map menu thing. So C dot ID is K min map ID plus count. Yeah, let's see if that helps it to select more than one. Crash that time. Oh, probably because of the ID. I wonder why that that messed all that up. Okay, I'm gonna make a tiny change to this function so I can easily s jump to different places I've changed. Okay, so this is this kind of killed it. Let's turn this off for a minute until I understand it. Okay, we do need Xcode. Doing some debugging now. 
Okay, so I need a breakpoint when it sets a selection. Call select. And I would like to see I like to see this. An M's debug alert kit format. Selection goes from this to that. Old selection, new selection. Okay, we've pressed I pressed the right button to select something else. And it went from old selection, new selection. What do we have? Old selection zero, new selection twenty-eight. And then after clamping it, the new selection is still 28. Choices.size, what do we got? 45 choices. Okay, so there's 45 places. Okay, here's where it stops actions on all the existing choices. Okay, maybe it's just not stepping right in the next step. Oh, oh wait, wait. So next time it went from old selection 28 to new selection 17. Okay, I think it's just the way it's moving around. So I'm going to turn off the breakpoints and just let the debug data, the debug alert thing, do the talking.
Oh, that's the problem. Okay, when I'm over here, I press right to get to the map. Press right again, it doesn't do anything. Press down, it doesn't do anything. Okay, so we just need a bridge to go between those here. If So we, the only way to jump right to the map, actually let's start jumping within the map. If the old selection is greater than or equal to total active plus total passive. If the old selection is equal to total active plus total passive, then the new selection, this is where it's right at the edge of the map where you basically press if add is less than zero and the old selection is equal to da, 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 new selection equals total active. Actually, we just want to be items per row minus one. I think that'll take us back to the top row. Okay, so next, um, if the I guess otherwise we just want to jump around. Huh, oh, I guess it's just new new selection. Let's see if this works for a temporary thing. Like the new selection is equal to the clamp I of the new or the old selection plus add clamp between. Clamp it between total active plus total passive and clamp two choices dot size minus one. That would be the top choice. Okay, let's see if that let's see how it goes. Nice. Okay, it's not in it's not in the correct order. In fact, it's in the completely wrong order because it's going from the entrance outward. But we can sort these before it all. Yeah, 
Yeah, that works, right? It jumps right back to there. This is actually K items per equip row minus one. We want to go back to that. This is kind of cool. At least we got it moving around to the right thing. We'll need a um, the cursor to change its sprite. Now I'll need to press press a button, confirm it to be able to warp to that position. Okay, let's draw a little sprite for that first. We've got them. Where is the selector? I think these might actually be the selectors. Oh no, it's that thing right there. Okay, so we need to kind of do something like this. Let's duplicate it. But for items. Heck happened there? All right, gear selector copy. Move it. There we go. All right, we need um, this to be that size, the size of that room. Move it around here for a second. Okay, there, we got a little selector. Now let's name it. Oh, whoops, did I miss? Looks like there's something else right there. Oh, yeah, that was that like background poofy thing. Okay, we got this ready. Let's name that something. What's this thing called? HUD gear selector? Let's call it HUD map selector. And uh, render all this HUD, all user slices, good to go. Okay. Now, when it's when the selection is one. Okay, how does it how does it detect that it is the gear menu? Okay, as an interface gear. Okay, so the select method can be smart enough to 
to recognize that it has now selected a map choice and change the cursor Oh wait, actually this is not the best place to do this because the other place is the one that knows all the information like the total active, total passive. Here we go, change the cursor here. If new selection actually we, we need to go if the face.cursor is not equal to null then face.cursor set sprite frame I think there's two ways to call this and that's Okay, so if the new selection is less than total active plus total passive, then we are going to use HUD gear selector. Otherwise, we're using HUD map selector. Okay, let's see if the cursor changes now. No face. Oh, that's this. Oh, it did work. It did it doesn't have the right position exactly. But it's definitely almost right. So where is it? It's like, oh, it's halfway. I get it. So it's like I need to be offset by its parent. Okay, the smarter thing would be to make it so it actually jumps to the right to the map if it is exactly so if old selection mod items per row equals items per row minus one. So if it's right on the edge of the items, that's the only place it jumps right to the map. So let's see if that works. Thank you. 
Okay, so I can press right. Good, I can press right while I'm here. I can even press left, but if I press right there, yes! We can go right if we're right on the edge. Oh, but not there. Okay, so we need that button to work as well. But if we're right here and we press right, yeah, it also goes. Nice. And it kind of doesn't discriminate. If you left from the bottom and you go back, it goes back to the top. That's okay. But right here, it also needs to work. So we jump right to the map if... If old selection mod items per row equals items per row minus one, or um, old selection equals total active minus one. Good. Okay, so we can jump right from that bottom one there too. So if we're here, press down. Yeah. Down still does that. Right gets you over to the map. Right from there gets you over to the map. Right from here gets you over to the map. I guess right from here should also get you to the map. Okay, one more thing. or old selection. Can we just get a total? Yeah, let's get a constant total equals total active plus total passive. I, can't, I use this variable so much. It should be shorter. Total. That's a little simpler now. So now we should be able to jump from the very bottom item as well. And then I think it's probably a good place to check in. This is a good little um, midpoint for this mini project. Right, so we can press right from there and get to the map. Or we can go down and press right from there or here or the very bottom one. Yes, they all get you over there to the map. Good, good.
Okay. Good stuff. This is definitely a very good base point here for the rest of for the rest of this work. And we got a new file. Add that. Commit this stuff. I guess we didn't need that min map ID. Okay, now to go and make a few edits so that we have the ability there. We want to be able to jump within the map, so we'll make a little quick edit there. Turn this back on. Okay, so the next steps. Um, Man, I guess the the most fundamental thing would be so if um if you're over on the map side and you press the A button, that uh, it will just quit the menu and immediately warp to that position. And then I can refine it later and make it so you confirm and there's like a cool zoom in and it shows you what's in the area and all that kind of stuff. But fundamentally all it really needs to do is find that map position and send you there, open up the teleport, and send you straight to that point. So, that means it needs to grab the map's position. I'm trying to think of ways to encode the data for the area position. I guess the simplest way to just to give it a name that's the string value for the area. That's probably the easiest way to just parse that because it's the only thing I can really think. It's got like a string. Each one of the Coco CDX writes and nodes and everything has a string. I could just store the store it there. Okay, we'll do that. So back when it creates. Um, all of the map things in draw map and it does um, room sprite room sprite dot set name kit no 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 we'll just use the area's position which is p is that it p equals center p plus p times pixel no it's not p pause map position
So we'll go set name pause dot desk. Okay, All right. there we go. We should be able to get the area from each one of these things. So if we press the A button while we're on the interface, at first it's going to go like, oh, you're trying to hold a button. Confirm that. <clears throat> so I go over to the map. Press the A button. Oh, okay. It does not. It doesn't have any problem with this. You can press all these buttons. Okay, it doesn't matter what I press because it's smart enough to realize it's not on an item selection. Okay, so if I press the A button and I release it, let's trigger that to close the menu and open up a teleport. Oh my god, this is so annoying. I hate this. Notification center is like all... I turned it on. I hate the notifications. I had it off for, a year, for years now. Like an idiot, I turn notification center on and all these stupid update notifications happen. Alright. So it needs to close the interface and open up the teleport interface. Okay, I got it. The phase gear will do a flux set string. <laughs> Isn't it? Right? It's like I will I will update that when I'm ready for that. You know, like I'm not just gonna update Xcode when I whenever they release an update. Get a buggy version of Xcode or something. So we need flux set string. Um, and that's gears gear um, on tick gear on tick. This should know how many passive there are. Well, I guess it doesn't. I know, right? Gosh. Oh, right, when Windows just says, you know what, I'm restarting your system. Yeah, that happened to me while I was in the middle of playing like Ori in the Blind Forest for the first time. And I don't really use Windows that much. So, you know, every time I load Windows, it's always updating itself. And so <laughs> I was playing Ori in the Blind Forest. I was like, whoa, what a sweet intro. This is the most beautiful story ever. Like I'm almost in tears and this computer just restarts. It doesn't even give me any choice. Like, bastard. I think that happened to me with Dark Souls too, which is also a really cool intro. I'm like really, Windows, you're just gonna be that? You're gonna be like that? Really? Yeah, it's like you kind of got to have them all these days. All right, 
we got the totals. Now we can process that. This is um, warp. Warp if e dot input dot did release button k okay, button a ignoring lock if our current selection is greater than or equal to total and we press the a button okay here's where we're gonna set flux set string something and I think we return false to cancel the interface. Yeah, that's what happens. You return false. So flux set string. Well, we would need to get the current map position. So that would be the current selection choice. Oh, it's not selection, it's um it's like face dot selection. Oh, it's I. Okay. I I dot selection. Okay, we've got I dot selection, which means we can get the choice, which is I dot choices, I dot selection, get, oh, what was, what is this? This is, uh, store, where did it store that? Oh, it didn't, didn't store it anywhere. We got to store it also in the, when we create each menu item, Okay, each one of the choices, how are we going to store? How are we going to store the area value? Flags, selection, scroll window, item height. I guess the menu. But the menu and the cursor, I'm not sure if those have been created yet. It probably has not, actually. So we need to close this. We need to create an on create function. which takes a node and a float. And we need to store um, the area pause. B3I, area pause, gotten from the nodes name and split with the character space. Capture this. 
and if wait a minute. I must have done this wrong. On create, is that right? Oh, it's a choice on create, which just takes a choice, not the other kind of on create. Something fell wrong about that. All right, choice C. No, we need choice underscore C. Okay, now we got it. If if the choice. <clears throat> If the choice is menu, or node, oh, just a node. Okay, C dot node is not equal to no pointer, then C dot name equals area pause dot desk. There we go. We've stored the value into the node's name once again. Now we can get it when we set the flux string If C dot node is not equal to null, then C reflux set string C dot node get name. Okay, we have a breakpoint there. And a breakpoint back where we were creating them. need flux. All right, here's where we're creating the map choices. And very pause 441. Cool. Looks like we parsed it correctly. Good. So we've got the name set. Now if I go over to the map and press the A key, I'm going to press the B key just in case. Okay, that didn't work. A key. Good. The A key worked. 
Let's see if the it can get the name. This will be the ultimate check here. Flux set string C node get name. Let's see if set string becomes stir four four one. Cool, it works. Good, it worked. All right. So the last thing is to make it so the tick or the the phase um phase gear is kind of the outer layer of all this. It creates the interface and all that. So it needs to check once it's done with the interface, it needs to check the flux string. Actually when it starts out, it needs to clear the flux string. Actually interfaces gear probably is a better place to clear the flux, flux string, but we'll do this in end, so a little breakpoint or a little edit point there. Now in interfaces gear. You can reset the flux string. All right, if flux string is not empty, And it contains a space. Then we want to push back K phase teleport out. all the phases for teleporting. I think there's teleport out, fade out. And then fade in. Teleport in. I think that's all there is. Teleport out, fade out, fade in, teleport in. All right, and the next thing is phase teleport needs to know. Needs to be smart enough not to bring up the menu anymore.
Okay, a couple more things here. The old area position should be fine, but the new area pause should become set from flux string. Okay. Now teleport out. It's actually teleport. Teleport out's begin function. Skip the interface of teleporting during the countdown. Skip the interface if teleporting from the gear menu. If flux type equals flux gear then nothing. Just allow it to go. Yeah. Well, let's hope this works, all right. Everything should be in place now. I should be able to pull a map position from the map, use it during the gears ending to trigger the teleport and set the teleport position. Okay, so nothing's happening, so it's either it's not closing. Oh, it worked. Oh, no way. It worked once I closed the menu manually. Okay, let's set it, set it um, something like that. Let's warp there, close. Nice, you can just warp anywhere now. middle of the wall. Okay. All right, well, it's kind of working. I guess it just the only thing it's not doing yet is closing closing the gear menu. I thought returning false from this would close it. Why not? Yeah, it returns false from the interface tick. Oh, it doesn't care. Oh, how does it close? 
Oh, you have to do the select or start? I guess we could fake it. You just tell it, say that the player pressed the select button. Kind of would be the easiest way to do this. All right. So instead of returning false, because it doesn't care, let's not try and confuse anything. Well, I guess technically returning false here is the right thing to do. Okay, so this is just, um, we're going to fake this and say that the player... released ah, what's the best way to fake input this button elapsed release elapsed Oh, you know what? A fast, a better way to do this, I'm thinking. Phase. Phase gear. When it ticks. About this, how about we actually respond to this correctly? Okay, so there's one little problem that actually when I press B. Oh no, wait, no, that was fine. Yeah, yeah. Press select or start, you should be able to exit. It. Okay, this is working fine. If I go over here. Nice, it worked. Now there's now we got to deal with this problem that it doesn't go to the right place over here on the map. But if, if I warp somewhere, yeah, it warps you wherever that is. So cool, you can warp from the map.
yeah now it's just going to be making it so you can actually move around in a sensible fashion over here and a lot of, probably a lot more than this that actually oh what happened some weirdness screen is black here what's what happened So there'll definitely be some issues here to work through, but this is a pretty good song. What happened there? Oh, I don't think it changed the player's position at all. Okay, well that's a pretty good start. I'm pretty happy with this. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna wind this down. This will be the end of the stream for now, but um. Yeah, the next steps I'll do will be to um, make it so the interface when you're actually moving around over there on the map will be a lot smoother. It'll, it'll actually make sense visually and intuitively. And then just kind of dialing it in, refining it, making sure it works, making sure it's intuitive and all that. But this will be sweet. You'll be able to warp from the, from the map menu instead of warping from some arbitrary number based positions which some people just don't at all grok so this will be a lot more easier to understand for everyone all right everybody well thanks for watching and i appreciate you all and i hope you all have a great night happy friday